I'd like to recognize the uh, gentleman from California, Mr. Rohrbacher. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and uh, this is one of those rare occasions. Well, actually, it's not. We, we agree on that. My friend from Colorado uh, just expressed a concern about uh, the Space Technology Mission Directorate, uh, and I, too, am concerned about that, and I join him in expressing that. I have a letter as well for the record that I would uh, submit for the record today, and I hope you would pay attention to that. So, uh, and for the sake of our, our high school and uh, students there, yeah, the, my friend uh, from Colorado and I ad agree on this. We're working on it. Uh, that's the type of bipartisanship that this committee is known for and America's <coughs> Space Program is known for. Uh, however, let me note that we have today, and this is for the kids, <laughs> we, we don't have a full-time administrator of NASA. I mean, this uh, temporary administrator here this is not, however, a product of partisanship. This is not uh, political. That's, uh, he's been in for a year. We, should, we, we have a good candidate, a great candidate, uh, but yet we have to face uh, we, this job, the job with someone who's in the job temporarily. This is a product of a couple of senators who are bullheaded and a couple of senators who are basically watching out for their own little domain rather than what's good for the overall of the country. And uh, let me just put that on the record so the kids recognize that is not, it's not politics. It could happen in any, either, this is not a, a political party based uh, uh, outcome. It's based on the fact that there's several people over in the Senate have demonstrated an arrogance that is unacceptable and makes things not work as well in Washington, D.C. Uh, let me note, now that we've talked a, a little bit about some of the other things, I, as you know, over the years, and when we're talking about kids, there's a big threat to these kids. There's a big threat to the people of the world, and it's the one thing that we seem to be ignoring, and I, 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 don't, I don't think that we're paying enough attention to it in this budget and others, and that is, at any time, there could be an asteroid or a near-Earth object that could come and wipe out half the world, if not the entire planet. Uh, this, their generation needs to know that we are preparing now for some way to defend this Earth, uh, global defense, if indeed something is determined, is actually sighted 10 years out, and we can do that, so that we could change the actual trajectory of an object like this. Now, that is not something that's likely to happen, but it could happen. And if it does happen, it'll mean your entire generation is wiped out. So for these kids and for the planet in general, shouldn't we be doing more of that? And uh, for example, Neocom uh, or Neocam is um, uh, something that is absolutely necessary to see if an object would be coming from the sun. Are, is there any money in, the, in this budget for ne Neocam? Yeah, for the, so for the total picture of planetary protection is what we call it. We have an office, planetary protection office in the agency. Right. Um, and, and what we do there is, is we've increased the budget to do more observations that we're required to do. But we've also funded a mission called DART, which is going to be a mission that goes out and potentially de determines whether we can deflect an asteroid or not. Um, and we continue the technology work on NEOCAM. We do not have the NEOCAM mission yet, but the technology associated with what would become a mission is being Well, this is vitally, this is something that's important, even though the chances of, of, a, of a horrible occasion like this are small, but the consequences would be incredible, catastrophic. Uh, in terms of your science and, and uh, budget and the fact that there, uh, there seems to be a limitation on what uh, Earth science that we has been mentioned. Let me just note that today we do have commercial companies that are capable of doing things they couldn't do 30 years ago, especially in the terms of remote sensing and Earth observation. There is no reason in the world why, if a private company can do something and make a profit at it, that we should take our limited budget for NASA and spend it on something that could be done and made a profit on in the private sector. So I would uh, uh, think that that's one thing uh, that we should be made sure of. We facilitate companies to get in, make a profit at doing those things in, or in observation and sensing 
that uh, they can do and make a profit at. Uh, lastly, I'd like to bring up the idea, another major impediment, and I've got one second to do it, and uh, it's debris. And again, uh, one thing that we can do as a government is work together with other governments, I might add, and other countries that want to have do things in space to help clear the debris that's limiting what we can accomplish in space. Uh, is there, what do we have on space debris? Yeah, we continue to work on the technologies, and I think this is a topic we've brought up with uh, Scott Pace, the Executive Secretary for the Space Council, right. is to look at an integrated policy because we all have an interest in this across the government. Well, uh, I hope so, and I would, uh, uh, let me just say that, again, if we can just give these young people a, a, a world in which they don't have to, in which their opportunities are, are present, but, but by not doing things about debris or, or a possible threat from an asteroid, uh, we're doing a great disservice to the next generation. So thank okay. you for doing your part. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. We're thank you. Together on that. Uh, I'd like to